Hi guys, my name is Jordan and welcome to Painting Through Glass, your point of view painting class. I was lucky enough to get into Google Glass and I'm a painter by trade and I thought the best way to use this technology was to show you exactly what it's like to be me while I'm painting. You'll get to see every mistake I make, every frustration, and every triumph that I have with painting this piece and the future pieces that come on because I'm going to start from the beginning or at least in this case the almost beginning and I'm going to go through step by step what I do to get a piece from the from the start to the end and you're going to be there with me and it's going to be a lot of fun I'm going to I'm going to just enjoy myself I hope you enjoy yourself uh, what I'm hoping is that I can do this every day my goal is six days a week, um, and a video every every day I work, just so I can show you what it's like. And this piece is probably going to take a few hundred hours, at least. Um, so I need your opinion on editing, on what you're looking for, if you want me to cut the audio, if you want me to dub over instead of instead of just live talking like this, which I'm happy to do. Um, you see, because I work with an airbrush and they are noisy and they are constantly noisy and it will get on your nerves. So what I'm hoping is as I learn to do this, you'll learn something from me. Uh, I'll learn something from the process of getting this sorted, getting this done and just having a daily log of what I'm doing and showing you how this tech can be just amazingly useful for this sort of point of view. So, uh, I am very nervous, guys. I, I am totally freaked out. I have never done anything like this. I'm reclusive is generally the best word for it. Um, and I did not know you could get stage fright staring at your own computer monitor. So good to know. Um, yeah, so here we go. So what I'm going to be using is my uh, OSI CMC Plus airbrush. Um, I'm a photorealist. I, I love the idea of technical painting. I'm, I can do some sort of abstraction where people find that interesting, but it's it's not abstract to me, it's just how my head works. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me just cut this a bit and get this a little bit in line. Slow my heart down a bit, huh? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Basically, I want to paint cool things for people. Every day. That would be my dream job. Just standing there, painting for hours on end, showing people how to work with different techniques, different mediums, how to get different effects with, with, diff with this, uh, different effects with different mediums, different uh, techniques. And my goal is to do a piece in a certain style by an artist from beginning to end, and then move on to another artist with a different style and work my way from there. I'm going to start with my favorite, who is Chuck Close. Um, he's He's just it, his, he's just a cool dude. I mean, he um, he's a world famous artist with learning disabilities. Before his major physical disability, and he's just someone I've looked up to for a long time. And my subject for this, much like Mr. Close's, is, is going to be uh, someone that I admire greatly. And you'll get to know him as we work. And. Yeah, we'll get to know each other while I work. So, I'm, I'm using a CMC Plus. You don't have to splurge for this kind of thing. I just happen to have it. Um, what I used before that for my very first piece was uh, the Badger Anthem 155. And if this turns on for me, there it goes. This was my first attempt at airbrushing uh, when I was 22, I think. I'm 25 now, so it's been a while. Um, 
this piece behind me is going to be, I think, my third or fourth attempt at airbrushing. I'm going to do color, which I, I haven't done before with airbrushing, except for one other piece in a totally different way. And I was originally going to do it in much the same way that Mr. Close did with three colors, but I found that it's just it's too labor intensive and I can get the same effect by mixing the paint beforehand. So I'm diverging there. I'm still using uh, his preferred method of grid. What I have here is a six by eight foot canvas that I got custom made at a uh, Mel's Frames. Sorry, Mel's Frame Shop in Portland. They are amazing and their service is great and the quality of the canvas is great. I totally recommend them. They are wicked. Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing is going through every step I go and you're going to see everything I do. And I'm going to show you in a, in a minute because that's what, that's what you're here for. And you're going to say, Jordan, that looks like crap. And I'm going to be like, yeah, that does. I'm going to work on it. It's going to look like crap until it looks good. And then it's going to look good. And then it's going to look great. And if the effect that I've planned for this piece works, it's going to be fantastic. In fact, I have a few major museums curious about the piece as is. So building up some uh, momentum of getting the piece done can't hurt. And it'll be fun. I mean, people are going to figure out what it is, what it does before this is done, which is cool. It's a risk I've had to, I've had to deal with. Um, and that's fine with me. I would rather get this work done with a log of the work that goes into it than not get it done at all which seems to be what's happened lately. So here we are. So right, I got into Google Glass. I'm extremely excited about technology. There is ridiculous potential for improvement on ways we do things. Uh, I, if, you've been in, if you've been anywhere near it, you know that its, it's main touted feature at the moment is navigation, but I love the idea of being able to record what you do as a set of tutorials, as a set of videos, so you can see exactly what it's like to be another person as they work. I think that's fantastic. That's something that I would love to see. So that's what I'm going to do for you guys six days a week. Um, I'm going to do as much recording as I can. I can't guarantee how long it is. I've actually got this plugged into my, into my uh, outlet right now to see if I can get an hour's worth of video straight out of it. If that doesn't work, I'll let you know why. If it does work, great. Then uh, this is much more practical than it was unplugged. So here we are. I'm going to get started. Uh, feel free to watch, feel free to comment, and feel free to uh, let me know what you want, what you don't want, because I need to know this. Because the faster I get this streamlined and sorted, the faster I get to do this as my job. So let's get started. All right. So. What I love personally about airbrushing and just painting in general, well, sorry, art, what I love about art is the mathematics of it. I love that I can break down any color into any other sort of colors to mix them and get anything I need. So like I've done here. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do for us is I'm gonna keep a log of, what, of the colors I've made every day. And I'm gonna do the paint, the paint amounts in uh, droplets because I measure everything by the drop. Um, it's anal retentive, but I have, I have a really fierce perspective. Uh, sorry, perfectionist streak in me, and I just want to guarantee that this stuff is working as intended, you know, and that it looks good. And it's not going to look great for a while because I'm painting a lot of the same color as you can see here. That might be a bit boring for you guys. I might skip ahead and get into some other part of it. Um, but this, this video right now is just testing out the format, um, seeing limitations of the platform that I'm, that I'm recording through. If this is not enough, I can happily set up cameras that I have um, to have time lapse as well as the live view. Uh, I can also set up different perspectives from video cameras. But what I would really like to do is just have this be my only view uh, learn how to work with it, get it to be smooth, fun, interesting, uh, overcome whatever the issues are going to be. I have a feeling that the, uh, the microphone picking up my airbrush is going to drive people nuts. Um, and if it does, 
I will just cut the audio and dub over. And that's just how it's going to have to be. So, without any more waiting, let's get mixing. So, I already know what my, my, uh, my gray is. And I have it measured out because I've been doing this for a couple days. And this is how I am the lamp. I'm going to do 40 drops of red. So that's 40. I'm going to do 40 drops of uh, my cyan equivalent. So you can hear my puppies. Um, I don't know if you can see her, but that's loose. She is pretty needy for a puppy. She'll, she'll probably be sitting here next episode, probably down there where my shoes are. Um, I have another one named Abby. Who you'll also meet. They're nice. I mean, they're puffs. It doesn't really matter, does it? You're here to paint. should be 40 of that. All right, and then I'm gonna do 120 drops of the white. Don't ask me why I picked multiples of 40, I just did. There's 20. Forty. I might have just spazzed on one of those. Okay, there should be 120. What I use to mix my paints, oh, by the way, I'm using acrylics. These are three different brands of acrylic. Uh, this is Liquitex Basic. It's it's supposed to be titanium white, but it is the least titanium white I have ever used. It is a very nice white. It is a very flat, solid white. It's lovely. I'm using a uh, Liquitex Heavy Body acrylic. Uh, I can't remember the name of this, but it's 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 uh, some type of teal. And then I'm using a Grombacher uh, Red acrylic. The reason I'm using these three paints is because these are the ones that work for this project. Um, I do a lot of research before I start something. And I do a lot of testing before I get going so that I have uh, very little downtime. It's just part of what I do. And so what I use to mix my paints once they're in here, see how they're just kind of looking? That's not going to work. I mean, it's, that looks like crap. So what I use to mix my paints are bamboo skewers. And the only real reason I use these is because they're cheap. You can reuse them and they work quite well. And the trick with this, oh, oh wow. Okay, so the trick with this is to grind on the sides as best you can and go around the length of the bottle, sorry, length, um, circumference of the jar. And 
you're just trying to uh, crush the pigment in correctly. And it takes it takes quite a while. It takes if you're doing this properly, I I would say it takes a good three to five minutes of uh, pigment uh, rendering, just because you want to make sure that this stuff is pulverized. It doesn't matter that's acrylic; it needs to be well well done. And there's a, there's a lot of reasons for it, but mainly because you don't want to spend Sorry, I seem to be going rather crooked. You don't want to spend uh, all day clearing your airbrush. It's a pain in the ass. Right, so we mix our paint up. Um, the reason I use these flat bottom jars is exactly that. They are flat on the inside, if you can get the proper ones. And they let you view underneath so that you can grab any of the mist pigment. Oh, look, there we go. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. I also have to mention that I have a mild cerebral palsy. So my hands tend to shake quite a lot and I tend to get tired quite quickly, but that's just part of what I got to deal with. So, if you can paint a straight line, I'm envious. All right. Okay. All right. So see, that's pretty good. And the thing is, I record every one I make in this booklet because regardless of where I've made it, what recipe I've used for my paint, I need to keep comparing because they're going to change over time. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you're not going to mix the uh, base acrylics the same way every time. They're going to evaporate as well. They're going to get slightly thicker and denser over time and it's something to keep track of. Uh, most of the time I'll add in a dropper of water, half a dropper of water, mix it in because diluting it's not so bad. It's, it's just when it gets thick you start to get all over the place. And it's it's just easier if you keep track of your of your run. Most people go for um, skim milk, which I never really understood because I, I know it's supposed to have the textual quality of skim milk, but I've never put milk through my airbrush, so I don't know how that would spray. And basically, it's it's got to be thin enough that when you press it on something, it, it'll blot, but not be see through. Um, at least for what I need. I need this to be opaque because of the method I'm using. I'm not using the three color method where you lay one color on top of the other. I actually tried. You can see down there. Um, it's too time intensive and it's, it's too easy to screw it up. So I'm diverging from, from that and as I've said before, I'm going with the mixed or pre-mixed colors. So we have our paint. It's relatively mixed. We have our dropper somewhere. There it is. We have our dropper. I think if I just put this down on my nose a bit a bit more. You can see exactly what I see. Yeah, close enough. I don't need my vision. It's fine. And most of the time, I'm actually doing it in one or two or three drop allotments, but I have quite a bit of square footage in this rather muted purple gray. Um, so there's going to be quite a lot of it. And the thing I love about acrylics is that if you get it to spray correctly, it's dry before your finger touches it, which is what I've always loved about Liquitex Heavy Body because they spray dry. And there's nothing like getting the paint to dry quickly because you sit on your you sit around a lot. And it gets quite dull. And you can always move on to the next section, but I'm more of a get a section done at a time kind of guy. It's just what I like to do. And you'll notice that this isn't even uh, it doesn't need to be right now. This is a base coat. Base coats are not gonna be seen. Um, you can make it even later. 
which is the great thing about paint. As much as you screw up, you can fix it, which is just one of the reasons I love it, because it's very forgiving. So it is, it can be quite difficult. See, so now I've covered this area, I had, I, I, uh, I really need to get this part situated. And you can see that it's slightly different color. And if you look over here, there's a uh, slightly different variations in the color. That's fine. It's something I have to uh, adjust for while I go. It's something I, I do, I've done before. Um, so yeah, so we're just, you're just trying to get it even. Eventually it will look even, even though it looks like crap right now. And that is just what to keep in mind. Eventually it'll look good. Just keep working on it. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to screw something up where you didn't want to screw it up. You're not going to want to do something four times, but you're going to do it. Just deal with it. It makes you work harder. Which means that you'll learn more. Because every mistake you make is something you've learned not to do. For instance, do not spray blue paint against a yellow wall without having something against the back of the canvas first. That was a stupid thing to do. I won't be doing that again. Well, actually, I lie. I'm doing it now. I won't be doing it from now on. So anyway. So yeah, I, uh, I suppose I'll just talk about myself for a bit because watching paint dry is not really national pastime of any country that I know of. Um, so my name's Jordan Townsend. I moved to the U.S. when I was nine uh, from New Zealand, which is my home country. I have been into art since I was four years old. I have wanted to be an, a professional artist since I was 13. I finally decided, screw it, gonna try it. Um, the last assignment I had was uh, for the Nigerian royal family for the king's 80th birthday. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, oh, see, we're out of paint already. So I think what I'm going to do while we have these dry sections on areas that I want to work on is I might do a little cutaway gag, maybe. I have friends who want to get on, in on this, and I'm happy to have them help. And I, I honestly love funny stuff, so if I can make you laugh while in between the tedium and in between uh, the sections, I think I'll do my best to. And yeah, I mean, this is basically what it's going to be. You're going to watch everything I do. I'm going to edit it so it doesn't look like complete garbage. I'm going to try to. I've never done it. I'm going to find out how to do it tonight. Uh, I'm going to do this entire painting for you. I'm going to record every action that I can. If I can get the device to run for more than an hour on a charge, I will be uh, while recording because it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, intensive for the battery. I, I will be doing that so that I can get a good full eight hours of video recording in a day so I can get full eight hours of work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this for you and then I'm going to hopefully flip it on its other side and show you what this is going to do. Uh, I thought about this idea about three years ago. Uh, I put it into action about two. Finally and well enough to work on it because I, I haven't been uh, very mobile lately due to some injuries. Uh, yeah. This is what I want to do with my life. I want to share this with you. I want to share this with you through the marvelous tech that is Google Glass. And let me know what you need. Let me know what you want to see, which artists you like, which artists you don't like. I'd like to, I'd like to know why you don't like people. That way I learn about them a bit more. Um, yeah. That's it, guys. Uh, this was the first video for Painting through class, your point of view painting class. Uh, I will be picking this up again tomorrow morning. This tomorrow will be the real test, an eight hour day. And 
I'll see what I can do for you guys, and I'll see. I'll see what I can do. All right, guys. Have a lovely night, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.